Okay, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, if I could have my next slide, which really makes the case. Um, we're in a world where One Health, the idea of One Health, this triad of healthy animals, healthy ecosystems, healthy people, um, has acquired, I think, growing scientific and policy interest. And a lot of this is global and framed in some very particular ways. So um, I think sort of triggered and amplified by concerns with big epidemics and outbreaks, whether we're talking about Ebola um, in West Africa over the last few years, or indeed the current COVID-19 pandemic. There's a big interest in um, infectious disease outbreaks, the ways these might link to zoonotic spillover from animals to people, and the ways they unfold into crisis and emergency. Um, emergencies that, sorry, can we go back? Emergencies that may link epidemics with other big emergencies, um, the drivers of climate change and other big ecosystem changes. So the focus very often, um, whether we're talking about work in planetary health and the new paradigm here, or in eco health, um, is very often on diseases that command global attention, often in the form of taking the form of a kind of outbreak narrative, the idea that a disease emerges often in a setting out of Africa, out of Asia, somewhere quite distant, and moves rapidly to um, affect the world through mobile people, mobile microbes, um, ultimately affecting centers of power. I think COVID-19 has quite interestingly reversed that narrative because we're seeing the worst cases in those old industrialized centers of now um, Europe and America, now infecting other parts of the world. But regardless, the focus here is very much on short-term shocks, on big scale pandemics, and very much around infectious disease and zoonoses. Well, if I could have my next slide, the work that colleagues and I um, at the Institute of Development Studies and through a number of different programs with partners in Africa, in Asia, um, have been doing has taken a slightly different perspective asking some different questions, placing some different emphases. We've looked not just from the global, but also from the local, and asked about the dynamic drivers and outcomes of disease in different settings. That's meant asking about what actually human, animal, and ecosystem health mean in different settings, looking um, at local knowledges and understandings and histories and livelihoods. That means we take a different perspective on how the notion of disease is understood and prioritized. Um, conditions that are important may well not be those that scientists and biomedical experts are prioritizing. They might even defy scientific categories. We've been asking how it is that these interactions between people, different people, social difference, gender, ethnicity, occupation, unfold in the context of systems that are dynamic, moving up through national to global scales, and about the multiple drivers there. Critically, we've, asking, we've been asking about who gains and who loses, who gets sick and why. Um, One Health doesn't necessarily mean that all people are affected in the same way. And finally, we've been raising some quite tricky questions about power, asking about the politics of knowledge, who defines the problem and the solution and whose knowledge counts. So I'm now just going to talk quickly through two quick illustrations of that kind of approach. The first comes from West Africa, the forest savanna mosaic um, of Sierra Leone and that tri-border region with Guinea and Liberia, where Ecosystem health, human health, animal health all depend on people working and living with a highly dynamic forest savanna farmscape um, in which food security, livelihood security, depending on making use of a diversity of, of farm, forest, um, swamp, and indeed hunting and fishing and small livestock keeping activities. But this is also a place where, where the world has focused in on Ebola, this was the, the ground zero of the Ebola outbreak, but also on a relatively less prioritized hemorrhagic fever, Lassa fever, transmitted by the Mastomys rodent, but also attracting its own global concern 
um, because it's seen as a potential bioweapon. And so research on Lassa has been quite intense, now coming into the frame again post Ebola. Yet for villagers, Lassa is just one of many big fevers that they experience. It's probably less significant than other types of fever. Um, and the One Health dynamics of Lassa are really quite interesting and raise some big questions about equity. Because what our studies in the Dynamic Drivers of Disease in Africa consortium showed was that one of the key transmission points for risk for Lassa um, actually takes place in women's dry season vegetable gardens, which they make in swamps um, in the farmscape close to their backyard gardens and kitchens. And um, it's the dry season where you get lots of mastomys rodents, which is also when women are doing their gardening and weeding and watering and tending vegetables. So in effect, they, are, they become vulnerable. And indeed that vulnerability is shown up to some degree in, in the caseload, which is bias by gender and bias by season. So what's the solution? You could take a One Health perspective and say, well, what we need to do is combine um, protecting women from um, this risk by integrating crop protection from rodents with disease control. And one could say it's really important to involve women gardeners in those solutions and we've got a bit of a win-win. But um, I think we also need to ask other questions about whether that would actually be a priority for those women because actually gardening has so many other values. It's critically important to women's independent income, to their ability to have income to spend on food items, source ingredients, diversity of nutrition um, and other things like school fees. It's critical to gender equity. Um, and very big questions about whether Lassa fever as one source of many big fevers is a priority. So one could, out of this example, propose a neat little One Health um, solution, but some big questions about whether that would be a local priority. If I could have my next slide, um, turning to the other side of the world and to the work that our Myanmar Pig Partnership has been doing as part of the Zoonotic Diseases and Emerging Livestock Systems Programme. Um, in Myanmar, um, there's a big growing One Health concern about antimicrobial resistance in the context of intensifying livestock systems, particularly for pigs here, um, and the fact that with commercialized systems, antibiotics are used um, as a prophylactic and to encourage animal fattening, um, yet creating risks of overuse and therefore big demands for stewarding antibiotic supply and use more tightly. On the other hand, that very intensification and the use of drugs and commercial feed is actually viewed very positively by many farmers because this is increasing their incomes, it's increasing their livelihoods. And these are not just um, large profit-making commercial firms. These are also quite local and mid-level um, poultry breeders. The challenges of stewardship are also um, made quite serious by the fact that um, things are not being, antibiotics are not just being supplied through a very clear state or, or big firm led um, value chain. Instead, you've got highly plural health markets, a lot of informal providers of services and drugs, a lot of self-purchasing and treatment. That's all quite hard to regulate. So what the project's been doing is to try and understand how farmers themselves um, are balancing these different trade-offs, how they understand potential risks in the context of livelihoods that are often very precarious and where people are balancing concerns with food security and decision-making in that context. Um, and also balancing antimicrobial resistance um, with other health and economic issues. So that's required deliberation amongst health and, health and vet policymakers, but also with people involved with wider value chain governance, looking at those concerns with AMR alongside food and health equity. Um, questioning industrialized food systems, but also saying we need to look at how risks play out for different people um, who are often producing food and raising animals in very different diverse ways. So if I could have my final slide. Um, these examples just um, raised to me and I think uh, my colleagues that a One Health lens is absolutely not about zoonotic disease only, although um, those have been two examples that I've looked at here, but everywhere does need to be problem and solution focused, 
but we need to attend to what the problem is. We can't always assume it. We can't go in with a, a global focus and say, okay, we can see a problem happening here. We need actually to interrogate those problem framings um, and how they're seen by different people in different places. Um, we need interdisciplinary work, which is yes, bringing, um, bringing biomedics and, and veterinary medicine um, and together, but also bringing in those social sciences um, as integral, because this can actually help us bring together multiple knowledges and expertises, which have to include those more informal, those more located, often indigenous understandings. One Health, as I hope my examples have shown, always has to be intersectoral, and maybe this is the key quality. Um, we need to look at health practitioners and the ministries and, and agencies that, that are dealing with human health, but also people dealing with veterinary health and indeed with, with those um, disciplines that, and sectors that look across those, agricultural policy making, food policy making, and indeed those in, in concerned with wider aspects of, of environment and planning. Um, this means also that that research and understanding needs to be engaged quite intensively with practice, with what policymakers and practitioners are, are doing. And finally, I think my key message would be that while globally alert, because I'm not saying that, that the big drivers of disease, the, the, the panics, the pandemics, the emergency responses are not important. I think we really miss some important insights if we don't connect those up with what it means to do One Health in a locally grounded and community engaged way. Thank you very much.